Hey, what's good, everybody? It's me, your hero, Benjamin Banks, and you're watching Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. Joining me, as always, from my co-host from the Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks podcast, Rebellious D and Double O T, Terrific Trav. How you fellas doing today? Chilling. Ready to rock. Ready to hey, rock. Hey, I'm yeah, ready, ready to, to rock. rock, too. It has been quite a bizarre ride, man. We've been killing it. We've been having some awesome guests up here on Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks, and we have an awesome guest joining us today, and that is voice actress Jamie Gray. Jamie, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Thank you for having me. I'm in a good mood. So, you know, that's always good. So I got the hey, aliens on yeah. the shirt or something. Uh, is that aliens? You know what this shirt is, though? Uh, is song. that? Hold on. Come on now. Uh, Come on. Four Metal Alchemist? No, no. Okay, I'll give you a hint. Studio Ghibli. Do you know any Studio Ghibli Hayao Miyazaki films? Yeah, of course. Well, yes. right? well yeah, I, I haven't seen all of them. But I've never you seen any more that, like, It's not from Spirit like, Away. It's it? things about the show or the movie, but this is from Princess Mononoke. Oh. These are the Kodama, uh, the Japanese spirits, but that movie's classic. Mm. Classic. Oh, yeah. Jada Pinkston and everything. It's, Bro, yeah. I ain't seen that movie in like 20 years. Yeah, that's why I haven't seen it. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. I just started my Studio Ghibli uh, journey because I've, yeah, I've seen did. Kiki's Delivery Service. I don't know if you can see, but I got Gigi right behind me on the shelf. Um, but yeah, I think I can get here. Okay, but I see everything else. I see all the uh, DBZ. You know, that's my that's my. Uh -huh. my hair. I see Boondock, hey. all of it. My hero. Hey, I, I, hey, I saw when you was on the red carpet premiere. I saw it. it's right. one of the photos. Ooh. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Oh, we gonna, God, we gonna talk about it. We gonna talk okay. about it. But before we get into the interview. Everybody that's watching, make sure that you like this video, you subscribe to the channel, and you hit that bell button so that way you're always notified when we have new content here on Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. And D, like you say every time. As always, podcasts, episodes in the description. Like, follow, subscribe to the channel, and thank you all for watching and listening. But I like kill Trav, it. your tip of the day. Hey, man, you need a belt? <laughs> hit the dude on the corner because he got <laughs> a, staple, a staple in the community right now. Hey, in the oh, community. Adam. Hey, they That's be right. having the treats, the, the, the juices, treats. The, the, the ices, okay. everything, man. So, yeah, let's go ahead and get into this. So, Jamie, the first thing that we ask all of our guests up here on Level Up with Benjamin Banks is what is your origin story? Every hero or villain has one. So tell everybody who you are. Whew, which arc am I in right now? Um, <laughs> hey, hey, we in the, we in the you know uh, pain like, arc life, right now. Life throws some curveballs at you. But um, my origin story, I mean, it all starts with a dream, right? And then, you know, I'm from Virginia originally. Hey, so. We know. We know VA. where you're from. Hey, VA. VA. Two, up, two down. Two up, two down. Hey, what part of Virginia are you from? Um, so to be specific, because you know we got to be specific. Uh, uh, so I'm from Richmond, but I'm oh, from... Oh, okay. okay. I go county to be specific, though. Oh, Henrico. Henrico. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Rico, That's yeah, what it is. Hey, Rico. Well, just to let you know, I mean, because when you're from Virginia, the only part that really matters is the 757 and then everything else outside right. the 757. They say we don't mess with the 804 cats. Yeah, we don't mess with <laughs> well, you know, I, went to, I don't know if y'all knew, I went to Hampton. So I had the 757 for a couple years, you know. All right, okay. all right. All right. Yeah, I was 757 for a while. Nice. Okay. The real right. HE. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, sorry. Um, Virginia, that's where it kind of all began. Um, I've been a huge anime, animation, cartoon, video game fan for the longest time since I was like five or six. And every time I watch a show, I, I wanted to put myself in there as if I was part of them, like Teen Titans. I was a Titan. You couldn't tell me, me otherwise, too. right? Like I was another <laughs> honorary member. Um, uh, but right. I immersed myself in that culture from the fan fictions to, you know, everything. I was obsessed, but it was a passion for me. And I didn't think of it as nerdy either. It was just something I truly loved. And I was like, one day I would love to voice in this. And it wasn't until later on, probably like around 2013, 2014, where I was like, yo, I really want to do this, but how? So I, you know, I my, took my due diligence. I, you know, got all the paperwork together, started shipping my car out to LA. I had job interviews lined up. Like you, I was laser focused. And um, I knew to be on LA, you got to have money. And I was like, would you rather be bored and miserable and in Virginia or, you know, shooting your shot and, and chasing your dreams in LA? And so oh, I made that decision like there, that. read a lot of self-help books to get my mind right, you know, and I had my own money. It was not mommy and daddy's money. You know, they're just not that type of parents where they're yeah. like, here you go. They're like, how are you going to get there? So I had the whole plan 
And it was like two months prior before my move, like Thanksgiving. I was like, yeah, so I'm moving to LA. I know where I'm staying. I have job interviews lined up and I already have the company that's going to ship my car out. So I was good. And um, it was a journey, but it was worth it. And man, um, I would say 20... 18 was when I first officially got paid professionally to do voiceover, e-learning, you know, that was great pay, you know, um, but then 2020 was like where it really shut off and it was like animation, like I finally got that chance. So, yeah. Hey, that's a good origin story. Yeah, right. you, you, I want to clap not, too loud because yeah, the mic hey, right uh -huh, here. Because, hey, know. it's not too often that we have our own up here on who's, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I was about to say, who's that cosplayer? Woo, Look at him. Leveling up with your banks, but, uh, no, you know, congrats to you, man. Like, that was an awesome origin story. You got out of Lickily Split, Virginia, and, you know, you got over to L.A., and then you already had a plan. You know, it's just like JoJo's yeah. Bizarre Adventure. You know, you set out on the adventure, and then you got to where yeah, you got. Yeah, nothing more like One Piece, but... Might, yeah, but definitely uh, see, like, yeah. Yeah. more like One Piece. I you say, walked oh, into that one. You walked nah, into I that. Did. I mean... I mean, she had a bizarre adventure. You said set and sail on an adventure. I mean, that's pirate territory, but okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Strike that. <laughs> this, yeah, this guy. But no, but uh, Trav, I want to pass the ball to you. Go ahead, sir. That's right. So, I right, so like we said, we're from the 757. You know, we're down here in the Hampton Roads, Chesapeake. They from Norfolk, you know. That's a whole nother debate right there. That's a whole nother discussion. <laughs> so, we're going to skip past it. Helicopter but, right away. <laughs> hey, that that's scary though, man. That's the other. We're talking on the other side of the country. You know what I mean? Yeah. East coast, west coast. You're flying yeah. over there. Um, you talking about these job interviews you ha had lined up? Like, what are we talking about? Are we talking about in this field you had lined up? Are we talking about job jobs? I'm talking job jobs because it's like think about Virginia. Let's mm -hmm. be real. It's cheaper to live in Virginia. And at the yeah. time I had just graduated and let's, let's not go into age, but anyway, I had just graduated <laughs> and um, I was like, I need a job and I knew I need a job in Virginia. So how am I going to move to LA without any money? Like, what am I going to do? So I, in my mind, especially because of how I grew up, my parents are baby boomers. You got to have a real job and all that. So it wasn't yeah. for them. But I was like, no, that's real. Like, I like having benefits. I like having money in the bank and in my savings. I like having PTO, paid time off. And so I was like, that's what I need. And it, it, it definitely took a while. You know, I did some contract jobs. Um, my job interviews were for like a banking. I sucked at banking. I was at a bank in Virginia. That was my first full-time job. And I wasn't good at it. I realized like what my strengths and weaknesses were. My drawer was always out of balance. Like, I was just like, I'm not going to make it here. So um, I was happy to, to move to L.A. But um, I was like, I need that extra money working part time. I know it's not going to cut it. And for some people, it does. But for me, it doesn't. And I think that's so important for someone to realize on their adventure, on their journey, because I like having nice things. I like I being a yeah. and save money because I'm telling you, like, life is not fun when you don't have money. Exactly. So, uh, uh, uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Nope. I totally, I totally understand right. that. Man. Gotta be a go-getter. Gotta go get it. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, sure. yeah. Like, hey, like they said in Turner Red with Four Town, you won it. See? <laughs> nah, yeah. we don't know that one. What, it's, what like, see, it's, like, it's like, it's like <laughs> this dude, Trav, it's just like, you you can sing the song with me when you want to, but then when I when we up here, you don't never want to sing it, man. It, it hurts yeah. my feelings, bro. I'll sing it in person with you neither, you know. No, nah, you were singing it last oh, night. Gosh. I was Take definitely not singing it last night. Children, children. <laughs> I'm just I trying to set the record me. straight, D. He's All trying right. to play me on camera. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm like, no, Trav will sing with us when. Okay, but, but D. All right, I'll pass the ball to you now because I have another question. But go ahead, D. Okay, well, I'm going to slide over to a very dear subject to us all video gaming, anime, uh, cartoons, all that stuff. Who are some of your favorite cartoon characters? <clears throat> Cartoon characters. I like how cartoon, you did it. Yeah, cartoon, yeah. Cartoon characters. characters. Yeah. Well, number one is Vegeta. Like, hands down, mm. across the board. How I think short he people. has some of the best, most beautiful character development. I used to make anime mm. music videos back in the day. Oh, like, hey, AMVs. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, but, uh, but, you know, but, you know, Funimation wasn't having that. So they uh -huh. had to mm. This before I knew the rules, right? But it was getting views. But that was my passion. I would like go around my dorm showing people. And I, when I think about how corny that is, <laughs> now <laughs> what songs would you use in the? Hey, I, were you using the Lincoln Park? <laughs> oh, man. The songs, 
So they were all about Vegeta, and I think I did one on Bleach. But um, the song's like, you know, I'm an eclectic listener. So one of them was like from a musical theater song um, from Rent. It's, <laughs> yeah, oh, that's yeah, awesome. Okay. Keep it at that, yeah, Rent. You know about that, Rent. Yeah, um, another one was like Tao Cruz. Like, you know, it's, I was young. Oh, I love some Tao Cruz. You know, they got some jams. <laughs> and I think, yeah, another one was like Alicia Keys. Yeah, it's just, and then other ones were like uh, top 25 favorite or funniest moments. Mm -hmm. Corny, cheesy, but I was young and it was passionate, you know. Yeah. It is what it is. I, I'm, I have no shame. Um, but yeah, Gina, hands down. He is such an incredible character. Even just his fight and just everything that he's gone through with his father and his planet. Mm -hmm. And yeah. trying to be the best. To me, I'm more motivated by Vegeta than Goku or any other character. Mm -hmm. um, and then, see, this is hard because I already know Vegeta, like, hands down. Oh, okay. If it were to be, like, cartoon cartoons yeah. uh, wise, I would say, okay, one of them is Pepper Ann. Oh, oh Pepper Ann, okay. Pepper Ann, did it? Like, hey, hey, she was forget a about my girl. Her. Hey, yeah, they do. They forget, forget about, about her. Pepper Ann. And I'm like, she was such a one of a kind character, yeah. especially back then. There were not a lot of tomboys with red hair, weird mm -hmm. outfits. You know, she she definitely um, helped me throughout my journey. And I'm like, is there one more? I'd hate to miss one because I'm that person where I'm like, it'll drive me I nuts. Hear that. I mean, um, it has to be somebody from Teen Titans, right? Oh, it could be. Oh, no, no. Mm, I'm not going to use Teen Titans, though, no. Um, yeah, don't let him pick for you. You know what right, I mean? Right. I just say that. I mean, because, hey, <laughs> because she mentioned Teen Titans early on. I mean, like, <laughs> hey, real talk. I know, that's like it, it, it stuck out to me, you know? Um, yeah. Dang, you know, I'm going to leave it at that. And if it comes to yeah, me, that's fine. Right. That's fine. We're good yes, with two. Really. Yeah. yeah. I, gonna I go didn't expect Pepper Ann, though, so already. Gonna, I'm like, uh, All right. I didn't either, but I was like, you know, we already gave anime, and so I was like, let's do like a real like a real cartoon, and she's pretty iconic. For yeah. Sure. Two is um two is good. I wasn't going to do anything crazy to like ask you to give us your top, top 25, like banks like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Try to give us your top 10 characters. I mean, well, yeah. since, I mean, since we were here, because like <laughs> I was thinking about this question because I haven't asked it in a while, but, uh, you know, give me your top five Disney <laughs> movies of all time. Give me a top Ooh. five. Okay, okay. Oh, see, and now I just thought of another character. But see, it's it's Disney. You know, I'm like, dang, I should go yeah. like Cartoon Network or Nickelodeon. But I'll just say it just for a villain, Ursula. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ursula's scarier than um Scar. She's my Facts, bro, facts. Uh, like, I say Scar Bertman only because, I mean, Scar had, like, a whole stampede. That was messed up against your brother. Yeah. But and Scar, Scar, like, off Scar won't no threat brother. for real. He won't bout nothing. He, exactly, yeah. but yeah. Ursula just two different like, types of villains. Yeah, like, anyway, so, yeah, Ursula. Yeah. But, um, okay. Little Mermaid, Aladdin, Lion King, uh -huh. you know, the classics. Classics. Um... Ooh, this race starts to get hard. The last two, Thank you. I have a feeling I know what one of them is going to be, but I don't want to. What do you think it, it is? It, it's, I, I know a goofy movie got to be up in there. Yes, oh my gosh, See, yeah, yeah, that's definitely on there. And I'm like, I would say a goofy yeah. movie before an extremely goofy movie, love them both. I mean, I'll let it slide, but technically, goofy movie is not a Disney movie. I hate people like this. <laughs> it's it's not. It's, it's trying, not under the to get Disney animation like, umbrella. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. But still, it's like the classics, and it's like Disney yeah. classics. Not for but sure. Disney for sure. Um, and the sequel, the, the fact that the sequel was still good, you know, that's rare. So that'll be four. And then the last one. <laughs> you can go and say Wally. <laughs> no! It's not Wally. It's not Wally. Dang. Um, Wally. Mm. What's it gonna be? These are the these are the hard questions. That's a hard one because it's like your top because you know I still I still keep up with all the Disney shows and movies, mm -hmm. so that's where it gets tough. I would just be like miraculous, but that doesn't really count. Uh, I mean, <laughs> yeah. hey, hey, if you want it, if you want it to count, it can count. Like that's there's right. nobody here it's that can plus. Yeah. It is. All right, we'll, we'll say miraculous, and then if another one comes up, I'll just let you. Oh, Mulan, that's another good one. Oh yeah, yeah well, see, I want to say Mulan because that's a good yeah, because like the song. Hey, class. Hey, look, yeah, if anybody, you. if anybody comes after you, you got me, your boy, the number one hero, Azuku Midoriya. Then you got Rebellious D, aka Red X. You know, that's who we cosplay as. Okay. When you had mentioned Teen Titans, D, you know, he cosplays as uh, Red X from uh, Teen Titans, okay. and then 
You know, me, it's like I cosplay as Deku, or sometimes I cosplay mm -hmm. as Jotaro. And then Trav, he just cosplays as himself, you know? And that's I mean, all like, I can be is myself, bro. That's all I can be is myself. And that's his message to the kids. That's his message. Just be yourself. <laughs> be yourself. <laughs> be yourself. You, you. I've actually dabbled in some cosplay a little bit. Like, I've done AX, um, Anime Expo. I did Bulma. And that's all I've nice. done, really. Um, Maleficent. Yeah, that's about it. Oh, but I hope we'll get some more cons again. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, something I want to piggyback off of what you were saying, because you had mentioned that Vegeta was one of your favorite characters of all time. And, you know, just like we were talking about before the interview started, you were at the premiere for My Hero Academia, World Hero, yeah. not World Heroes Mission, um, Two Heroes, sorry. Yeah. Right? Two Heroes, yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, Two Heroes, yeah. Sometimes it gets confused with the names, but I get yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> it gets confused with the names. And, you know, you actually got to talk and meet with Christopher Sabbath himself, yeah. the voice of Vegeta, the voice of All Might, the voice of mm -hmm. our childhood. So, like, how Congrats, was it, you know, having that moment? Iconic. When I say I went to that premiere specifically to see Christopher Sabbath, because mm -hmm. um, basically the way it works is, like, they'll give us assignments. And there's a whole bunch of hosts that After Buzz had. And so I was like, okay, I got to be there. I got to be there, uh, especially since he's going to be there. Because I've been to Anime Expo where I thought he would be there and he wasn't. Right. I already knew what Christopher Sabbath looked like 20 years ago. That's how like big of a fan I was. I knew what he looked like 20 years ago. <laughs> so um, I was like, I have to go to this premiere to where I was like, love everybody else that was there. But I was only focused on meeting Christopher Sabbath. I when you're on a red carpet and you're interviewing people, sometimes you have to be like, hey, Chris. All right. Can I interview? Because like you got to be able to get that shine. And sometimes you only mm -hmm. get one question or maybe they'll let yeah. you. It really depends on the award show. Right. Mm -hmm. But um. <clears throat> Or the carpet but it was amazing to meet him i was so nervous i have interviewed stars from like robert de niro to megan the stallion and christopher sabbath i was most nervous to meet because he was the voice of my childhood of my favorite character i was shaking the whole time i don't know if you could even tell but i was like Damn. okay and i was like jamie just listen just <laughs> listen like his daughter's there hero i um, mean his daughter hero and i'm like trying to make sure i don't hit her with the mic and all these things but I, I got through it and I told him at the end, I was like, we're gonna work together one day. And he was like, yeah, you know, make sure you get on the list or whatever. I'm gonna get on that list. But um, it's amazing to like know people who have worked with him and be in such close proximity. Yeah. Because a few months later after that, I ended up, um, you know, being in animation. And like now me and Christopher Sav, we're on the same roster, like mm -hmm. uh, for, for uh, VO agents. Like, nice. and this is so um, <clears throat> cheesy of me, but like, Cause he's with other VO um, agents as well, but on the roster, our names are like right beside each other. I know hey. that, but I'm like, oh my gosh, like it's it's iconic for me, and it's a blessing, and for me because after that night, I bawled my eyes out, like I was shaking, crying, because I was like, I met him, and I, you know that's why for voice actors, it's so important for us to realize the impact that our work has, because mm -hmm. even for me, I'm still getting used to this, you know? Yeah. And um, I have to remind myself daily and constantly, you are that girl, like you're doing it. You're not trying, you're doing it. Yep. And mm -hmm. it's important to validate yourself. I there love that. Preach. So, Preach. Pre yep. so pretty All much right, you, uh, you had your Azuku Midoriya moment. Yeah, like... <laughs> Oh my <laughs> Jesus. No, I don't know no, my, my career yet, but like it, it all happened. It all blossomed. So yep. it's amazing. It's so amazing. No, it's I good totally to have those moments. That feeling, man. Mm -hmm. And you know, because it's like I'm a professional wrestler and it's like <laughs> I've had the opportunity to, you know, meet some of the people who I grew up watching on TV. And one of the dream people, it's, it was two people that I wanted to meet. And one, unfortunately, I'll, I'll never be able to meet because he passed away, uh, Macho Man Randy Savage. But the yeah, rock, brother. Wayne Johnson, like that's like he's the reason why I even started watching wrestling uh, back in the late yeah. 90s. And like that's that's my dream. My dream is to meet him one day. If I can work with him one day, it would be awesome. I feel like anything that you want to do in life, you need to always speak it into existence because Absolutely. if you don't speak it into existence, then uh, I feel like it's never going to happen. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's so true. And it's like, there's there's always nuance to everything because, you know, I'm always on Twitter, like looking at all the, the deep quotes and stuff on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I would hear contradicting messages like, well, you know, don't tell everybody everything, you know, make sure you keep it quiet because the evil eye. And I do think that things like that can be true. You don't want to tell all your oh, business yeah. to everybody. However, 
have confidence in what you want and what you say that you're going to do. So like when I said I was going to move to LA, I had people say that I wasn't going to move, but I'm like, you don't know me. You don't know what I'm capable of. Like mm -hmm. I have all this lined up. I know what I'm doing. It's already set in stone. I, like I'm moving. So it doesn't matter if they say anything else, but like, let's say if you're still getting stages, you just got to know when to speak and when to keep it on mute. So right. but other than that, like you have to have the confidence to be like, yeah, this is happening. Like I know I'm going to book a lead role in an anime one day. No one can tell me otherwise. I already feel it deep in my soul. I don't know when, but it, it's going to happen. You know, same with video games. Like I fully believe in myself. My talent is out of this world and I just need other people to, you know, recognize that and they do but it's like yeah. i have to continue to get my name out there and it'll happen i yeah, feel that just, a thousand percent not yeah, even banks with the 100 percent. i'm talking about a thousand <laughs> no, and, you know i want to piggyback off of that because you know before we brought you up here when we were preparing and whatnot like i listened to your demo reel and like i agree like you have an amazing voice and like yeah, you have so sure. much range so mm -hmm. it's like i just love your energy and i love that it's just like you have a plan, just like how you left from Virginia. You know, you had your naysayers. I feel like anything that you want to do in life, you're always going to have people that are just like, oh, do you really want to do that? I mean, because I I know my mom, even when I was just like, I wanted to be a wrestler. You know, at first she was just like, oh, like, do you really want to do that? You know, I'll support you and everything. But then once I actually did it and she saw what I was doing, you know, like she's my number one fan, you know? So yeah. it's like, I, I totally understand, you know, too with the evil eye too because like that's something in wrestling too where it's just like it's like you want to say stuff but you got to be careful because sometimes some people it's just like they always say everybody that smiles in your face isn't your friend and you can right. easily tell somebody like hey like i got this opportunity and then like they'll go behind your back be like uh, i don't know if you should use them because of this this and that even if you are if you got a rocket on your back and like it's blasting off to mars it's like people will still try to you know, knock it's you off of that rock. Yeah. But <laughs> like, it's, you just have to really know what you have to offer, you know, and, and who right. you are. And, and it's like, just go with that. Because again, as actors, we have these thoughts all the time where I'm like, who be quiet, be quiet. But like, mm -hmm. you just have to, again, keep going despite it. Uh, yeah. Just to, just to sum up what Banks was trying to say, I call that the crabs in the barrel. You know, just because someone else can't climb as high as you, they the ones at the bottom want to hold you down and, you know, anchor you yeah. where they are. So sometimes you just got to get out of there. That's true. And can I say this? Y'all let me know if you agree. Especially like when I was in Virginia, I got so many naysayers. Like I was, it was just like a certain energy. Maybe it was Richmond. I don't know. No, 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 no. Uh, it's all, it's hey, not, right. I say this all it's the not. time. Virginia <laughs> is a trash state. It is yeah, really a trash that's thing. Let's not say it like I that. Mean, you have, no, you, not have trash, some, not you have some good things here in Virginia, but it's you know, like, people. There, like there's some people that are good, and there's some people that are trash. I mean, yeah, there's I just a lot of people. Pull your way through, yeah. yeah, yeah. There's just a lot of people. It seems like that are very negative in this area. Yeah, yeah. And it's just, they want to stay small, uh, and it's because Virginia can be small, but it's like there are those of us who just are able to think beyond, and that's why I just encourage you to keep doing that despite what they might say because it's almost like innate in them to just have a, a retort that's negative and it's like What's yeah uh, yeah and it's um it, one thing i want to touch on while we're here is we've started we do cons and we have our uh our venue table and stuff like that mm -hmm. at like for a lot of uh carolina cons and i just see the difference in the clientele like just the way people will kind of approach or more likely to approach us at in carolina outside of virginia cons I, yeah, and it's I can just, see that. It's like, I, I don't want to call them clientele, but you know what I mean? Like, it's just like people are more uh, outgoing, if you will. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it seems like more people are just having fun. Like, in Virginia, everything seems like business to me. It's, it's hard to get way. support here. It's hard to yeah, get it just seems yeah. like it's all business. That's, yeah, I totally yeah. get that. Even right, at a like, con. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's. I feel like that's with anything here in Virginia, like music, wrestling. You know, yeah. it's just like, I, I feel like it's more of, okay, well, what can this person do for me? compared to like what D was just saying because I, I I can admit like I did see that difference in North Carolina like people were just coming up to our table like we had little kids like hey can we be interviewed can we do this can we do that yeah. in Virginia in a way it's kind of like you got to go find well you know walking around the con floor and yeah. everything like hey you want to be interviewed and whatnot so yeah. it's like so I get it you know from one interviewer to another you know what I'm saying right right <laughs> it's like yeah. but but um you know something I wanted to piggyback off of what you had said, where you said that you want to be the lead in uh, anime, cartoon, or video game. 
Like, what would be an anime that isn't out yet? Something that you, like a manga that you read or something that's currently out in Japan and hasn't been dubbed yet. What would be something that you would love to be the lead in and lend your voice to? Oh my gosh. Something that hasn't been dubbed yet. I don't even think I would know yet because everything I, I watch is, is subbed, but it's also dubbed. So I'm like, I don't know if I'd be able to answer that one. But as far as like the type, I mean, I want it to be a shonen for sure. Okay. Um, and I, I want her to be this badass girl. Like for me to, to voice <laughs> an eagle, that was like everything to me because she was always like the type of character I wanted to be. I was a huge tomboy growing up. Mm -hmm. Everything my brother did is like what I wanted to do. We watched anime together, video games, all that. And so um, Jess was like a dream come true. And so I would love to get like little elements of all my characters into this character, but I want her to be like a badass character. Uh, I want it to be iconic. I'm like, let's go big, you know? Um, Damn right. You know, I want to I want to sing the theme song. Like I want to do all these hey, things. Right. She said yeah, Johnny yeah. Tsunami. Go big uh -huh. or go home. You know right. what I'm yeah. <laughs> I like That's that. Somebody That's said Johnny right. Tsunami. I was literally about to watch that the other day. Good <laughs> movie. It's a classic. Hey, it's so good. It's so good. Classic. Hey, well, hey, there. you know, hey, since we're here right now, what's your uh, top five Disney Channel original <laughs> movies? There you go. Okay, what okay, is your top? Okay, all right. All right. <laughs> um, if I can do three, we're good. But yeah, Johnny Tsunami. Three. Okay. Um, Xenon, Girl of the 21st Century. Uh, I was just talking about that the zoom, other day. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Make my heart, make my heart boom, go. Boom, boom. My there soul, you go. Gosh. Um, oh, Smart House. I knew you were going to say that. And we constantly say that yeah, with Jump. Jump, like jump the day. house is jumping. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, okay. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, that's what we need to do. We need to have a, a house party and then we can recreate that scene. From Smart House, where they would dance. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We got See, the I like moves. Party theme ideas. That's cool. Model behavior was good too. Justin Timberlake was in that. I, okay, um, I remember that movie. I that's remember four. that. Movie. And then I, I, mm, we'll just leave it at four. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, fame, no fame. My, my, that, my that. ultimate oh, is Brink. Girls. Brink. Girls. Oh, yeah. Brink. Yeah. My ultimate is Brink. Brink. Brink and Girls, sure. I just watched Shooter Girls. Shooter Girls was fire too. Hey, we, hey, we missed three LW up here, man. We hey, missed three hey, LW. <laughs> not, not when they threw that chicken wing at Naturi, though. Not when they threw chicken wings and mashed potatoes. <laughs> Yo, real talk, man. A, a Disney Channel movie that don't uh, really get up, talked about a lot is uh, The Color of Friendship. Like, oh, that's that such a, hey, hey, I say it all the time, bro. We The Color of Friendship up here, yeah, man. Me and you, I love bro. it. It's bro, such a good I, one. Uh, I remember when I was in elementary school, I had came home from a family reunion and The Color of Friendship was on TV. And I had wrote a report about The Color of Friendship and I got a 100 on my report. And people were like, people lower. were just like, well, what, like, where did you hear this story from? I was just like, oh, my grandma told me about my it. My grandma told me that. It was about her and her friend when uh, they were younger. And yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, like that's what your boy does. You know, I'm good at telling stories. You know, that's what I do. <laughs> that is what. That I is do. what he does. <laughs> that, that is what I do. I, a, my, my, I posted a picture earlier. Of my cousin and uh, two of my friends. They was just like, "Oh snap!" Like he was, he, he wasn't exists. lying. Like he really does have a cousin. I'm like, this is, I'm not <laughs> lying about this stuff. But no. So now, you know, since we were talking about you know miraculous, and you were talking about Jess. Like, how was it auditioning for that role and then getting it and then being a part of the Miraculous team? Because we've interviewed a lot of voice actors that have lent their voices to Miraculous. And it is an amazing show. It's been on for years. And I feel like it's like it's one of those shows where it's like the who's who's of voice acting is up there. So, like, how was that? It, it was one of the, the most memorable moments of my career. So um, auditioning for it. You know that TikTok that's been going around where like, be delusional, be yeah. delusional. I don't know if y'all seen that, no, but um, it's so okay, well, there's like this TikTok where she's like, be delusional. Just t when you have a delusional mindset, it's like, you know, think you're, think you're hot, you know, think right, you're, right. think you're everything, right? Think you're number one um, because it's so important. And so when I got the auditions, first of all, I was like shocked, like, oh my gosh, I have auditions for Miraculous. And I knew my niece has watched the show. So that was exciting. Mm -hmm. um, and then they give you... Um, a little snippet of the original in French so that you can at least hear the voice. Um, but it wasn't for all of the characters, right? And yeah. so they didn't have any pictures. I didn't know what she looked like. They just gave specs or specifications on how the character is, their age, a little bit about them. So you kind of just have to wing it. 
I auditioned for like five characters. I, I believed in myself. Typically, like, you know, with auditions, sometimes you don't have time to audition for five characters, but this was like my first huge audition. And I didn't even know that it was on Disney. So this is where I was like completely oblivious. And um, I auditioned, I got it in within two days. And then um, I did not find out that I got the role until like two and a half weeks later. Depending on the medium, like anime, you'll know within a couple days if you got the role. And then um, anything else like video games, maybe a week or so. It just, some timelines vary, but um, yeah, it, it was unexpected. Someone had broken into my car that day. So I was already stressed out, yeah. was broken or stolen. Cause I keep it pretty clean, but it was still annoying. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. so then to get it, it was just such a shock. Like I couldn't look at it for a second. And then I was like, let me like, clear my eyes. And then lo and behold, they're like, congratulations you you know are in this special but they didn't say which role i was like oh my gosh thank you which role they're like okay you're gonna be jess eagle and i was like what oh my gosh so then they send you the script like a couple days later so of course <laughs> i'm checking to see how many lines i have <laughs> um and i was like oh wait she's kind of a big character i was like wait she has the miraculous like this is wild and um it's it's funny too because um even after i auditioned i binged the entire show not wow. knowing if i was gonna book it or not but i was like let's just get into it. I became a, a fan of the show and um, to know how huge it is. I mean, the fan base is literally the most loving fan base ever. They go hard. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's incredible. They're so welcoming and um, I'm honored to be part of the miraculous family. So to work, sorry, to work with them. Um, it was awesome. You know, I already kind of was familiar with the voice director, Ezra. He's the voice director of a miraculous. Um, it didn't take too long. You know, it's a movie, so it's not like you need a whole bunch of sessions to, to wrap it up. But um, it was just amazing. My whole mindset going into it, like I prayed. It was golden hour, so the sun was shining. I had a perfect parking space. And I was just <laughs> like, God, it's hard to find parking out here. <clears throat> but I was like, God, you know, just let, let this session go well, you know, but most of all, like, whether they like the voice or not, let them like the character. I could have had a character that nobody liked. I could have had a character right. where maybe yep. they hated her voice, but like for them to show me so much love, you know, that was that was everything. And it was completely miraculous. This is my first mm -hmm. animation project ever. And I was almost embarrassed yeah. to say that at, at the right. moment because I was like, I'm kind of the new kid on the block, even though I've been doing this for a while. Right. But as far as animation, I'm like, everyone else has so much more experience. And I was like, Jamie, you got this. Like, you're good. And um, again, it's just it's miraculous. And I'm so proud of it. That's right. Hey, both Hell my daughters, yeah. they're huge fans and they oh, they in bed that. right now watching Miraculous. And when I told <laughs> them that, hey, I, I let them know. You know, daddy gonna be talking to eagle tonight and they yeah, do the same thing <laughs> right. uh -huh. so, you know hey i'm looking cool once again there you uh, go cool. tell them i said hi as well i, I will mm -hmm. so yeah so you know being on miraculous and you know working with all of those people and everything like you were saying you know i always think that it's cool when it's just like you said it's just like i'm here i got this it's all mm -hmm. about believing in yourself and yep. it's mm -hmm. like uh, like I said earlier, you know, when you speak stuff into existence and like that stuff comes true and whatnot and, you know, to see some of the other projects that you worked on, like you've done stuff on Bratz and then Rainbow High, like, though, and, you know, it was when we had, uh, I'm mad, I can't remember her name um, that we had interviewed, uh, Trav, who was it that was on uh, Rainbow High? I'm mad, I can't remember her name. Is it Brenna? No. Not, it wasn't oh, Brenna. Well, we Ira? No. no. It starts no. with an S. Shara, there we go. Shara, there, yes. yeah, 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 there you go. But I mean, because it's like when we interviewed her, I didn't know that Rainbow High and Rats were pretty much created by the same people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So right. to you know work on those projects and like to see like their growth over the years, like how how is it being a part of that team? It's amazing. I literally I remember like seeing Bratz for the first time when I was a kid and. Yeah. At the time, I was like, oh, they're too grown for me. You know, I was a tomboy. <laughs> so I, wanted, I was like, I can do Beanie Babies. I had a Vegeta action figure. Hell but yeah. um, Brad's Dolls, I wasn't quite as into that. But I knew what it was. I knew about the movies and all that as well. Right. Um, and I would even sometimes catch a show. But um, when I got that as well, that was a, a huge shock. They didn't even call it Talking Brad's. They called it something else. Like, it was like an alias name. So yeah, I had yeah, yeah. no idea that I was auditioning for Brad. So when I got the email that was like, oh, talking Brad's, I was like, huh? 
So that's when I was like, wait a minute, I'm a brat. So like, what? Like, it was insane. And um, that's one of the things that still takes time for me to like, you know, just let it marinate because, you know, I see brats references almost every day. You know, right. some will like make a caption like, oh, I look like a brats doll. It's like people are still like brats has a huge impact even to this day. And, you know, I know that more things are coming out with brats, but to have a doll is like I never I always wanted my own merchandise and my own character. You know, I wanted to hold it physically. Um, but to have a doll is is a, a, again a dream come true mm. um and two dolls at that so i'm like okay let's well maybe we'll rack up but um yeah rainbow high that came out when i say like 2020 basically but my season um that just came out recently it's it's been amazing um paris hilton was in my episode like that's crazy it's like there's always something that i can take from each moment that was like that's that just made it this yeah. much better mm -hmm. um and i know that you know season two is coming on netflix soon for rainbow high so it's like Disney, Netflix, like these are milestones for myself. Um, it, it, it's just amazing. Hey, hey, look, now we got to get you on Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network. It's I love it. It's bound to happen. It's bound I to love, happen. I love the fact that you're taking the time to appreciate your moments on mm -hmm. your journey. A lot of people, you know, some people just do it and will just treat it like, you know, this is work, this is work. But it seems like you genuinely enjoy your journey. So I do, and it, but it's like I, ha I have to find it in something because, yeah. you know, um, it's very easy to like, let's say after miraculous, when I say I was still laser focused, because I'm like, I had no agent. Um, and I was still the new kid on the block. So I'm like, how am I going to make these connections and, you know, do all these things. And some people were still saying no. And I'm like, you're saying no to me. <laughs> I'm like, I am? like, did you hear the demo? But it's, it's always going to be something right. But I'm yeah. with a great agent. I got an agent less than a year later, I became uh -huh. SAG eligible, like I could join SAG right now. But I'm like, I'm waiting for that perfect opportunity. And um, I'm very open about that because it's like, this is the typical journey of a voice of, of an actor, period. Right. And so I want people to know, like this, you're on that journey with me. And I think that's beautiful when you can see like, oh, I remember when they were here and now they're yeah. up here. Yeah. And, um, you know, people get to witness that journey with me. But yeah, I have to take the time because um, it was hard. Like after Miraculous, I was like, what if I don't book anything else? You don't want to have that mindset. Yeah. Then brats, what if I don't book anything else? And it's like, you just have to appreciate everything that you are booking because there are some mm -hmm. people who kill to be where you are. Yeah. So the Always. fact that I moved to LA to do this <clears throat> and it's actually happening, I, I would be ignorant to not appreciate each win. That's it. Yeah. Now, something I wanted to ask you because, you know, you mentioned earlier, you know, you were playing video games with your brother and stuff, you know, growing up being a tomboy. What were some of your favorite video games that you enjoy playing growing up? And what are some of your favorite video games that you enjoy playing now? If you, when you do have time to play them, because I know, you yeah. know, being out there in LA is very busy. It is busy. Um, but see, you know what? I would say my love for video games has been rekindled now in my adult years, especially as a voice actor, because of the auditions I get. And I'm like, oh, that's exciting. Or I heard about this game or, oh, I want this game to come out. So I get excited about uh, different things. And, you know, but it's like you can't get too excited because you'll get your hopes up. I've cried over some things I thought were for me that were not. But you can't be a hater. And I, I made sure that I wasn't. And that's a whole nother story. But um, <laughs> um, but as far as video games that I grew up on, this is like back to PlayStation 1. <laughs> Okay. All right. <laughs> this is embarrassing, right? But I will say, like, there was a gap where I didn't play video games because I just say school growing up, I didn't have as much time, nor I didn't did I have the money for a console. But um, I was into like Tekken. Oh, um, yeah. Uh -huh. My characters were, like Eddie and Hihachi. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Um, what else? I also liked um Guitar Hero for the time being. Like that was more fun, just kind okay. of fast time. Um, but can you see, you see how like dated my video games are? Hey, no, hey, well, hey, not, I mean, they're not the dated because we're all the same age. Yeah, we're so, all the same I mean, age. Like, yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> when, I, when I talk to like directors and stuff, they're like, oh, so like what other video games? So I'll tell them like the same story. And I'm like, I'm getting back into it. Kind of like I just started watching One Piece. Like I'm like, I'm just mm -hmm. taking my time. Um, but there back. are some things that I've seen where I'm like, that's 
that's dope. Um, like I'd love to be in Call of Duty. I would love to be in Final Fantasy. I would love to be in um, Saints Row. Like I want to be in hey. all of them. Hey, you know, that's why I pay attention now more to it. But I think voice acting is what definitely refueled it for me. Um, I would love to be in Genshin Impact. I play Genshin Impact. Um, and great game. One of my favorites. <laughs> it's great, right? Um, and I'll just yeah. leave it at that. But yeah, I, it's it's slowly but surely like starting to come back up. But I'm not going to sit here and act like I was a huge, huge, huge video game fan because I'm like, yeah. it's, I'm starting to rekindle it. And my goal is to get a PS5 when I can find one. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot hey, of well, people's hey, goals hey, right hey, now. Well, by the time you get <laughs> a PS5, a One Piece treasure right about now. By the time you get a PS5, the PS6 will be out. Yeah, I mean, like that's. I guess I could get an Xbox too. My friend was like, "Get an Xbox instead," but I was like, "I really want the PS5." So we'll see. But I've been thinking about it. Yeah, I mean, because I mean, what you got the Wolverine game coming out? You got Spider Man too. I mean, there's so many things um, coming out. Suicide Squad. Um, yeah, that Saints one's coming Row. out. New God of War coming out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whew, so it's that's great. I'm, you know, one day, one day, and I do, I do have some other things coming out, like video game wise, that I can't talk about. But yep. ideally, I want to uh, do more in video games where I get a lead role or where I have a name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, um, one thing I wanted to touch on while since you touched on or brought it up is uh, Genshin Impact. I play it a lot as well, and you, you, you know, you play as well. And um, one thing I can say is, or hope. Is that you can uh, you can reel that one in because they're constantly adding to the game. Yep. Like yeah, they're constantly I'm, I'm adding. So, yeah, I'm I mean, very hopeful. I, I have a good feeling about it. Um, but like I'm starting to see the audition, so I at least yeah. I can look at that. Um, you know, but I don't think I booked them just yet. But you know, yeah. when I see more, let's Keep see what going. happens. Let's see because, what happens. Um, a couple of our uh, as Banks likes to say, "Go, you want to plug them, Banks?" A right. couple of our uh, our past guests. Uh, Kira Buckland and Laura Post, Laura Post just, yeah. just got picked up as the two new characters that they, they wow. release in the 2.5 uh, patch. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah. I haven't made it that far, but when I do, and, and see, oh, here's, yeah. right. see, here's the thing, too. Like, um, Jenny Yokobori, she's great, too. She's mm. uh, Homia. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 So she was in the, the last up, uh, update. So, yeah. Yep. It, that's it's right. amazing, and I, I hope to join Genshin Impact. It's a beautiful game. Yeah, that's wow. what I always tell people. It's a beautiful game. Well, I was going to say, uh, you mm -hmm. know, it seems like whenever somebody comes up here on Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks, <laughs> they always end up in Genshin Impact. Yeah, so either I mean, they're there or they end up in there. Oh, yeah. still happen. <laughs> you know, good luck. Right. Just, hey, just know, uh, you know, we got a lot of pull in the voice acting community, you know? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just said this guy. You know, you know what guy. I do. I'm just shaking my head. Him and, and his you know, breadsticks. You never know. And, uh, you never uh, know. I do, yeah, I you do, do never people, know. I do owe people some breadsticks. But uh, yeah. Tribe, were you about to ask a question? I actually oh. wanted to bring up something else completely different. If okay, go um, ahead. we're good to shift. So I just recently, yeah, yeah, we're good to shift. I'm shifting in, mm -hmm. and recently I've been really getting into. Uh, the story podcast because we reviewed this show on netflix called archive 81 mm -hmm. and once i realized that it was like a podcast but it's like a storytelling podcast so it's like you're listening to a movie mm -hmm. i just really started diving in and you got the new batman that's out now on spotify with uh, the homie from black panther as batman and mm -hmm. i've seen um, they're starting to do like the visual story stuff like HBO Max uploaded some of the Batman visual stories and yeah. I had seen that you know you were doing Sword Princess um I'm at Almaty is that how you say it? yeah 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 so if you want to kind of talk about that and what these visual stories are for some of the listeners that may not even know what that is yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely a different avenue of voiceover that mm -hmm. I was also introduced to recently. Um, but Sword of Princess Amatia, it's like a, I would say it's, it's it was originally a manga, and then they created it into like a more of a motion um, video game that people could uh, interact with. So it's it, more interactive, yeah. Um, and so what I've seen just with these podcasts, especially like visually, they're doing so much. I mean, they have mm -hmm. everything from adventure to like magical creatures and warlocks, like the whole bit. And I've auditioned for some of them, but um, they're just getting really creative. And I, I think it's pretty dope. But um, as far as myself, like with Sword Princess Amatia, who did I play? Brit Britannia? 
who is like this rich black woman and she's mm-hmm. treating this uh this other woman as if she's the slave like it was it was crazy um but she's rich and pompous and that was a dope character to play too and it's a different avenue because i think sometimes as a voice actor sometimes you think the only good work is like the stuff that's on networks and video games mm-hmm. but there's so much more and i just encourage people to really branch out and and try those different avenues do the motion comics i just uh, recorded for one a little while ago um do the do the indie films do the stuff that's on youtube as well because you never know rainbow high was originally only on youtube and then it went to yep. netflix so that's why it's like do the smaller projects do the motion comics do the the visual podcast all of it you never know and even I some of the that. youtube shows uh, what's that it starts with a h it's called something hotel but it's strictly yeah there we go yeah there it's it is so and stuff like i mean we're talking about millions and millions of views maybe even more than that would get on a network you know what i mean so people shouldn't discredit and anything that okay. is just getting put on youtube because it's not we're not 20 years ago bro yeah like, uh, you don't I mean, have you to your, be on cable network to be yeah, successful you, anymore exactly. you get your stuff where you get your stuff you get your stuff where you get your stuff dude. damn right hey, like the belts what, on the hey corner. hey just like sliding you know some people yeah. slide Hey, hey, some people miss and some people slide. You know that's right. Saying? And that's a, keep sliding. Keep that's sliding. And, so, and has been hotel has gotten crazy because when I first saw it, it had like 53 million and it had just been posted two Shoot. months prior. And that was just like one of their music videos. So, you know, for those creators, to, like this is before they had, you know, booked, um, you know, a network, but it's just incredible to see the growth. And we got to witness that. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So now sure. something I wanted to touch on because you had mentioned the character <clears throat> that you played in the game was, uh, you know, black and then the characters that you have voiced have been black. And I just want to ask you, like, how do you feel about the, you know, rising of representation that we're seeing in the voice acting community? It's about time <laughs> and we still have some work to do, you know, for sure. But it's about time because even the things with Family Guy, right? Like where some of the voice actors were, you know, kind of doing their own thing um, and mm-hmm. dropping out from doing uh, certain characters that they have been doing for years and years. Um, it's like there's that drama of like, should they let it go or not? I mean, if you've been doing it for already, it's like, honestly, just keep it. That's in my opinion. Yeah. But I respect the fact that they're willing to step down. I really do, because representation is so important. How can anybody think that? oh, I can do this if they don't see it or hear it. Yeah. A lot of voice actors, especially uh, black voice actors, our heroes are Phil Lamar, Deborah Wilson, Cree yeah. Summer, yeah. but we need more, right? And they're iconic, right, right. Yeah. but we also yeah. need more. And here's the other thing about them too. They also did on camera. See, right. I'm still trying to do, I'm doing on camera, but I'm like, I want to do more on camera network um, gigs as well. So it doesn't just stop with VO, but it's like, that's what's so iconic about Deborah and Cree and Cedric Yarbrough. Like they've been on TV, like they are really about it. And so yeah. I'm going to be there as well. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's just amazing. It's crazy. Cause you say that about how, you know, Cedric and Deborah, uh, Kevin Michael Richardson is another one. Yeah. Where it's just like, you know, these these voice actors because growing up, it's just like they pretty much lent their voice to any character that was black in a cartoon. Right, right, you know right. Keith David, so, another one. Mm-hmm. Oh, go ahead. What were you about to say, Jamie? I was going to say that's that's really why it's like we always heard Cree, but it's like, I like that. I like being able to recognize her voice. Exactly. <laughs> Isn't that Freddie from a different world? You know, like I liked uh, being able to to pinpoint that. And as iconic as they are, I like that there is a new wave of uh, black voice actors coming in and, and other people of color as well. But um, it's still needed more. Like there are still moments where you will see someone who, you know, might not be that particular um, race or ethnicity, but they're playing the part or yeah. they're still playing the part. And so it's like, you know what can you do you can't force people to do something yeah right I and agree. hey this is coming from somebody outside looking in you know being obviously i'm white you know what i mean so i didn't know <laughs> yeah, outside, what, shit. i'm super I'm, I'm super i'm super i'm super in the film and i had seen an interview with denzel and he was talking about scorsese was supposed to do schindler's list but mm-hmm. Um, Steven Spielberg did it, and if you know anything about Schindler's List, it's it's a Jewish film, yeah. and 
Spielberg is Jewish and Scorsese is not. And Denzel was talking, if Scorsese does that movie, it's not the same movie. And that's why black directors have to do black movies. Yeah. Because at, as me, I he, he said something like, and I'm, I'm obviously going to butcher a little bit because I am white. But he <laughs> so, said something like, I can't relate to waking up with like the hot comb on the stove and doing your hair and stuff like that. These are right. things that I can't relate yeah. to because I didn't grow up in the household nope. with it being problem. Man, that shit's scary, yeah. man. You know what I mean? So yeah, and when comb. Denzel made these points, that's what I was saying, man. If you ask a bunch of white people who were their influences coming up, you could get 30,000 different people. Yeah. But it seems mm -hmm. like when you're asking people of color our age who their influences are, they're going to have the same five, six, seven people yeah. because yeah. it was so limited. And it just, yep. hopefully for our, the kids coming up, they won't have just five people to pick from. They'll have yeah. 30,000. There's so many, yeah, so many voice actors now that are out there. I mean, like, because I know um, I was watching uh, Coraco's Basketball and <laughs> i was watching it Poor and then like i just heard a voice <laughs> and i was just like oh snap like that's cedric l williams who we interviewed and you can right. who is now the face of nick jr uh, yeah I know. You, i'm so <laughs> proud of you he's also my leery he's um for my uh character he plays the bird he plays my um my kwame yeah so like um when i say leary wings of liberty and i transform he's leary so that's, that's crazy that's, that's and pretty he's sweet now the the face so the face. i just felt like black excellence like that is mm -hmm. so incredible yeah. i love the face growing up mm -hmm. so yeah and yeah you can you can listen or you can watch his episode. It is up here on our YouTube or you can. And he uh, came you know, up here and review Chucky with us. He you know, the, Chucky the, with us the, too. the series. Yeah, Cedric's with an awesome us, so. person. And, you know, it's just I, I love when you're watching something and he's just like, hey, I, I know that boy. You know, know what I'm saying? Yep. And like, yeah. and see, Jamie, that's what's going to happen to you. I'm going to be watching JoJo's Bizarre Adventure one day. I'm like, uh, I don't know who that is. <laughs> playing Genshin. That we waiting on that Genshin. I'm waiting on that Genshin. Mm -hmm. It's the voice it's happening. Oh, it's gonna happen. It's like I'm gonna be watching the next My Hair Academia movie, and it's gonna be all night. And then Jamie is gonna be the the, the lead. Like you're gonna be just yes. like uh, when we interviewed uh, Ryan, Ryan Colevi. Yeah, Ryan Colevi. You know, yeah, uh, a roadie soul. And it's just like you're gonna Rody be soul. you're gonna be the lead supporting character up there working with Deku. It's happening. Uh, it's gonna happen. It's gonna sick. happen. You just not you yeah. never know where life is gonna take you, at, man. So That's right. uh, the next the question I have for you next is. You know, when you're not voice acting, like what are some of your hobbies that you're into? Yeah, that's good. Um, so I mean, I do a little bit of everything. I like to cook. I like I I don't know if y'all seen any of my stuff, but I, I cook a bean dish. Um, mm -hmm. I throw down in the kitchen, and I take pride in that because although it's a basic skill, like I really throw down. So uh, I cook. Um, I like to hang out, go to the beach. You know, out here in California, they're always here yoga like as far as working out yoga hiking things like that i'm with my dogs um give them a shout out what's their name oh yeah yeah so um i have a dog named trunks named <laughs> after kid trunks specifically oh, we know <laughs> yeah because yeah so trunks and then um i have a new puppy who i literally just got a couple weeks ago um which is another boy i was worried about them being two boys but they are getting along so well um his name I is a no, I thought about it. I thought about him <laughs> Goten, but I was like, nah. So I was like, I like the name Boss, or I'll call him Bossy. Like, mm -hmm. I was just like, okay. oh, wake up, Boss. Like, I like that. So I'm gonna say, right. I'm Bossy. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh -huh. but yeah, other than that, those are, my, those are my dogs, my my, my boys. Mm -hmm. Hey, we hey, we heard them a little bit earlier. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like they, they trying to make you know? a cameo up here on the podcast. It were, I think it's not your time. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but um, but you know, we're we're here at the end of the interview, and you know, when we get here, D he always has his final questions that he loves to ask before we wrap this thing on up. So D, I pass the ball to you. The floor is Got yours. Got it, Captain. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so first question, favorite 80s or 90s movie or both? Whoo! Okay, I'll try, I'll try. Ugh, there's so many things that came out in the 80s. As a matter of fact, why don't you give us your top 10 uh, 80s and 90s movies? <laughs> Go ahead, who's your top 10? No, no, just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> one, uh, one of you got it. Yeah, I'll do my best, I'll do my best. Whoo! Because <laughs> there's so many movies that came out in the 80s, so I'll do my best. Okay, if it's like sci-fi, I'm gonna say The Fly. Good one. The Fly um, Good with the oh, yeah. Yeah, you, know, you know about The Fly? Yeah, The Fly. Yeah, it was like, whoa, it was, I was yeah. just enamored by it. So that was '80s. Crazy. Um, 
Hmm. Okay. And then nineties, dang, like that's the thing. I'm like, I gotta, <laughs> I'm the type of person I have to like write down stuff because I'll forget. Like there's just so many nineties movies, man. Yep. And I, I already gave a lot of animation. Lot. So I would have to choose real people. Mm hmm. Hmm, like human beings. Let's what was see. the first movie that came to mind when you thought about it? When I the first I, thing that popped first in. Thought about it, I, I thought of a lot of stuff with uh, Robin Williams, like yeah. Mrs. Malfire and Jack. Oh, yeah. like Flubber? Well, Flubber yeah, might Malfire. be 2000. Flubber might nah, be 2000. Flubber was like, I think, 99. Late 90s? Flubber, I didn't like, Flubber was like 98, I want to say. 98. Right, Flubber is on the... 97. On the Flubber came out 97. Yeah, okay. okay. Um, Man, there's so many good ones. <laughs> this is hard. Um, 90s. Yeah, and I feel like also the 90s, I was watching mostly stuff that was cartoons anyway, because I was a kid. Mm -hmm. so right. I'll just keep it with Robin Williams. It's like, who it just makes it easy. Mm -hmm. But yeah, anything with Robin Williams is good. Any Anything with Will Smith, although, you know, he's a little questionable right now. Yeah, um, yeah right, questionable. <laughs> hey, man, we still support him. Hey, we still support him. Nah, hey, come on. My man's hey, just going hey. through a rough time right yeah, now. Yeah, man. Hey, well, well, he got to clear his name. name. No. Hey, I, I, no, I still no. got the, I still got uh, Big Willie CD, man. <sighs> <sighs> that was a classic time. I, yeah, but um, I'll okay. just leave it. I'll leave it. At, I'll leave it okay, I like those answers. Hey, go ahead and say Wild Wild West. Let's go ahead and say I was going to uh, say, you know, I'd probably say like Bad Boys, Independence Day, Men in Black, you know. He had a lot of classics. He just, he just he messed did. up lately. He just messed up real bad. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, that. man. That's and, you know, since, since we're here, I, I just too. feel like, you know, some of our favorite actors that we grew up watching, it's like they kind of reached that point where it's just like they weren't making classics anymore, if that makes any sense. Because I feel like Eddie Murphy went through that. Uh, I was just talking. It was Eddie That's Murphy. That's my birthday. Well, Ed, Eddie move Ed, Eddie movie. Eddie Murphy stopped making movies like that because he had kids and didn't want to make those kind of movies. No, like no, no, no. I mean, I mean, like the Nutty Professor and the Clumps. Like those were good movies. But I'm talking about like when he came out with Pluto Nash. It was just like, That's what uh, I. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that movie. Yeah. That, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, don't talk about Pluto. Down. Nash. Like uh, what was it on Daddy Daycare? That was like the last some of the last few good ones. But those are like, yeah, all that was dude. that was pretty good. Last, yeah. last hey, of Zoe the gas loves the Daddy Daycare. But then he came yeah. out with Dave. <laughs> but after that. Was it Meet Dave or it was song, like like I enjoyed Norbit, even though a lot of people didn't like Norbit. Nah, Norbit but sucks. I, I feel like you know like a lot of those actors like Sylvester Stallone. Arnold yeah, I liked Arnold him in uh, one of his last movies, uh, The Golden Child. It's one of my favorite. Oh, he but he's incredible in Dream Girls. You know, <laughs> yeah. what two thousand? Yeah. You know, he's incredible yeah. in Dream Girls. Yeah, Tower Heist was was pretty good. You know, I mean, The Haunted Mansion with Raven Simone. Oh, classic. Play. Yeah, well, I mean, the stuff that he just had that came out on uh, on Netflix, like Dolomite is my name, and uh, oh, and you know, the oh, Amazon yeah. Prime coming to yeah, America. Oh, too. yeah, coming to America. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, those are those like are it gimmies. Wasn't it wasn't bad. Yeah, it's different. Yeah. But I'm talking about I'm talking about like that that late '90s, early 2000s. I just feel like a bunch of actors kind of you know changing in the actors. guard, man. Yeah. I mean, because like Will Smith, like he had really good movies like in the '90s, but then it's like. When it started again towards like the early two thousands, it was just like, eh. yeah, I would I would say like after two thousand five or two thousand seven, that's when it stopped. Because remember, he had like Pursuit of Happiness, and yeah. I love Pursuit. You of know, happiness. Oh that, yeah, that, that is such a good. Movie. He should have won an Oscar for that. I don't know why he didn't. Yeah, but it was like after, after that, it kind of went down, especially with his son and you know them making movies together. Um, <laughs> yeah. Who else? We don't uh, talk about After was, Earth, okay? After Earth. <laughs> what was that? What was that one movie, Gemini Man? Uh, yeah, something. Uh, oh, he, well, he did something with uh, that was on Netflix with like the the cop. Oh, and, right. Um, yeah, right. right. That, that, that was, was okay. bad. Yeah, that was, that was right. bad. Chris yeah. Tucker, he kind of just like fell off a little bit. Like, yeah, he didn't fell off, but it's just like he didn't make the same things. But I think life. Life right. just yeah. people, they get tired, you yeah, know? exactly. Yeah. Hey, when yep. you said life, I thought you were talking about the movie Life because that's Which a is classic. a classic. <laughs> right, yeah. Hey, but, it's um, one of his... Banks no, likes to likes to mean that movie. Really. I do like say like one of my favorite scenes. <laughs> like like my tag partner, he hates it whenever I bring up the part where uh, Martin, where uh, he 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 smelled that pie. And he ran across the field to get it, and they was shooting at him. And my he's just like, why do you like that scene so much? I was like, because <laughs> man, it's just like when he stuck his hand in that pie, and then he started eating. He's like, oh, like I felt that. I, <laughs> I don't know why. But that, no, no, life is it's, a. It's a good movie. It's sad, but it's good. <laughs> yeah, um, hey, one, we need. Yeah, we need to. Go. We need to recreate. Uh, we need to do a parody 
and D, me oh, and we you, don't. we can we can walk into the. Uh, I, bars. If we're gonna no, nah, if we're gonna do it, we got, it's got to be the scene at the end where we're close to the end when they were sitting on the bed. And he was like, Ray, what are you mm-hmm. looking at? And he just got he was just sitting <laughs> I wanna, there. I, I want to do the scene where it's just like you know we talking about the boom boom room. And then all of a sudden, that Trav come up in there. Like, Trav is the bus boy. You know, we oh, all having a good time tearing <laughs> it up. Mm-hmm. Jesus. What is wrong with you? I don't um, know. A lot. <laughs> oof. Uh, one thing I wanted to touch on, you mentioned life happens, basically, Miss Gray, is that, you know, it's important to also know when, you know, when it's time to hang it up, you know? Mm-hmm. It's something that comes up in sports a lot. Especially in not necessarily entertainment. I guess it's still entertainment in a way, but people don't know when to quit, and then they just kind of tarnish their reputation. It's not perceived, I don't think, the same way in like acting, but it's like it's noticeable to us as fans. Right. When you stop making good things, like so. Yeah. Or like when you're phoning it yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah. Just uh, just hang it There's up. So many good things in that, um, like so many things in just that itself, because especially with social media, yeah. we have to do so much just to keep our brand up. So it's like, if I don't post for a while, which I do take my time, <laughs> I have a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but it's like, you know, you don't want people to uh, think that they don't know you or think mm-hmm. that you're not doing anything, you know? And that's why there's just always this constant pressure. Yeah. But uh, as far as like knowing when to let it go, you have to ask yourself, you know, the hard questions and yeah. facing ourselves is probably like the hardest thing to do anyway. Sometimes I don't want to face myself. Sometimes yeah. I just want to float, you know, and, and then, and then well, think hold about on, it. Be careful when you say that. Oh, yeah, not, not, float. Not, not float, but I don't want to float, but I just want to like chill. I should say hey, that. Okay, there you go. Yeah, hey, because Pennywise will come out. Pennywise will snatch you on up. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, no, no. See, red yeah. Balloon? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not, not float like that, but where you just want to chill and, and then you have to get that focus back and get that energy back. So, I feel that. Um, but you yeah, ask yourself the hard questions. Like, is it worth it? Am I happy? Do I have time for this? Can I pause? Sometimes you have to let it go, but you just need to take a break. Yeah, exactly. So just ask yourself the hard questions and, you know, you know, hopefully you have like a good support team or system or one that you can build because not everybody has that either. Yeah, that's yeah, true. That's true. It makes it tougher. Yeah. yeah. Um, Cause then it feels like everything is literally on your shoulders. Yep. Exactly. Um, Second and final question, Bagheera, please. Yeah, we snowball up here a lot. Yeah, because he asked you a question, and I, I don't even know how we got to everything else. Um, <laughs> yeah. Second and final question. Uh, growing up, was there anything that spooked you, scared you, stayed with you? Whether it was a creepy lullaby, creepy dolls at your grandparents' house. <laughs> You know, a creepy guy who used to cut the grass next door. <laughs> the guy on Friendly the neighborhood mailman, you know, uh, something, whoa, take man. take it easy. You know, anything. I mean, I had a couple things <laughs> that kind of scared me. There was, like, this doll that used to be, it was, like, a hand-me-down doll. I never had, like, fresh dolls, okay? Right. Just dolls that people would give us. And it was, like, a, a larger doll, and she would just sit beside my bed. But it was so creepy because she would just be smiling like this. <laughs> on the other side. Looking so like a Snapchat like, filter. <laughs> it, was scary. it was so scary so whenever i have friends come over to sleep over i'm like so you can sleep on that side they're like i don't want to sleep on that side. i'm like you got to because i'm not sleeping right. on that side. yeah and i was too scared to like pick the doll up i don't even know what brand that was but it was like an off brand anyway mm-hmm. another thing though is i think i mentioned ursula earlier i was mm-hmm. really scared of ursula but that's how you know pat carroll played the hell out of that For role sure. because it's she really scared me. I was like, if you say Ursula three times, I was <laughs> that she was gonna pull up. Same Ursula with was your go pull up on you, Birdman style. Oh, with her, <laughs> her, <laughs> but her, and then also um, Candyman and Beetlejuice. That's what I just uh-huh. said. Can- mm. Yeah. Oh, mm. don't say it three times. I was convinced. Like I was like, don't. But now I'm yeah. like, eh, whatever. But Candyman, I'm like, I actually do. don't say it. <laughs> no, I, I, hold on. Be careful because you are looking at a camera and you didn't already said it twice. You know, you said said oh, it yeah, twice. Y'all gonna yeah, come out and get you. Hey, hey, look when that movie came out. And uh, cause I had one with my boy Will and I was just like, bro, like Candyman still has, you know, a lock on the black community. Yo. Like people yeah. are still afraid. Like when I told, and I don't want to say his name cause I didn't already said it like two or three times. But when I told my cousin what I was going to go see, she was just like, I don't even understand why you're going to go see that movie. It's, it, it, she's <laughs> old, like, this is like one of my older cousins. Why would you put her. yourself through that? Yeah, yeah, yeah cause you, you, you know how older black people are. Like when it comes to like spiritual stuff and all that stuff. Like they don't, they don't mess with that type of stuff. Uh, we know oh, how yeah. you are too. Oh, yeah, we sure. know how you are. You're shaggy. Water bugs. Well, I, well, I, like, when I was, a, when I was a kid. 
my cousin used to tell me he was just like, yeah, like Candyman had came and paid him a visit. Hey, and, you said it one too many times. Bro. I know, yeah, man. Take it easy. I, well, who, he well, what, he do, man. what do you think? What, <laughs> what do you think would happen if C Man, uh, Beetlejuice, and Bloody C Mary? Man. You say their names at the same time, and they're all in the room together. Who do you think will win? Oh my Beetlejuice god! Beetlejuice is kind of a client. I'm not what sticking around to find out. You know? yeah. Right, I wouldn't yeah. find out. But you know what? I feel like it would be Candyman will come up first because he's already there usually pretty quick, and yeah. I feel like he would want to kill you first. Beetlejuice, he might take his time. You know, he was kind of lazy. And yeah. then Bloody Mary, I feel like she's more of like that a uh, theory, uh, that whole like myth. So I'm not quite sure, but yeah, yeah, I feel like Candyman. He he got Very that similar to Candyman. Bloody yeah. Mary, Candyman, kind of yeah. same mythos. But no, oh yeah, go ahead. So yeah, we snowballed again. No, nah, go ahead. That was uh no, nah, Miss Jamie. Uh, we got the dolls, the creepy yeah, dolls. The dolls. They <laughs> come to get you at the sleep. Now I'm a doll. Great answer, as usual. And uh, yeah, now you would know. That's right. That's it. Uh -huh. <laughs> thank so with that being said, Jamie, thank you so much for joining us up here on Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. You are an awesome guest. And uh before we let you go, let everybody in social media land know where they can find you at. Of course, you guys, you can find me on social media on uh, Twitter at It's Jamie Gray, but you got to spell it right. J-A-I-M-I. -I. My parents were trying to be different. Just, <laughs> uh, But it's also at It's Jamie Gray on TikTok. So you can find me on there. And then on Instagram, it's at Jamie Gray, just Jamie Gray, J-A-I-M-I-G-R-A-Y. And yeah, ch check me out. Check me out. Hell yeah. Awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah. y'all make sure that y'all support her and everything that she does because mm -hmm. y'all heard it from me first. Everybody that come up here on Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks, they always end up in Genshin Impact. So when she makes yes. it in Genshin Impact, it's just I'll like you're here first. All right. Right. That's right. So Trav, let them know where they can find you at in social media land. That's right. I am also on the Instagram at ZK Audio. I am on the Twitter at T R A V I O S Z K, where I'm also on Letterbox, ranking and rating my daily movie watches. D, where they gonna find my man at? As always, you can find me at Rebellious Double Underscore D Twenty Three at Instagram dot com. And if they need a hero in the streets, where can they find me? <laughs> <laughs> on the corner with the belt. <laughs> yeah, I did. Hurt. Maybe I did. <laughs> You'll never know. Go ahead. You can find me, your hero, Benjamin Banks, at King Benji underscore Banks on Twitter and Instagram. You can find me on Facebook at Benjamin Banks. I should be the first person to pop up. If not, then I need to contact Mr. Zuckerberg. Thank you again, everybody, for watching this interview. Make sure that you check out some more interviews that we have here on the channel. Make sure you check out some reviews, reaction videos. We got all of that here. Our podcast, the link is down below in the description where we have brand mm -hmm. new episodes every Tuesday. And then the video of that episode is up here on YouTube on Friday. So with that being said, keep that pinky up. Stay positive. We'll see you next time on Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. Peace. Thanks again, everybody, for watching another episode of Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. Make sure you like, follow, subscribe to the channel. Podcast, we got that too. Make sure you give us a thumbs up and hit that bell for further episodes and notifications. Thanks a lot to our patrons. And if you don't mind, join the Patreon. We'll be having new specials coming up soon.